Welcome back to the farm for another project. If this is your first time, I hope you enjoy. So I've got something kind of unique we're going to be working on today. I had a company reach out to me that actually does digging for fossils and certain types of minerals. And what they want me to build is a portable stand that they can actually lift up and then one person will sit there and kind of shake the tray, let the debris fall through while another one's shoveling stuff in. So I'd never heard of one and I said I'd love to build something I've never heard of. So let's go in the shop. I've got a kind of a drawing to get started and uh, let's see what we can make. So here's what we're going to attempt to make this prototype out of. So this is 1 by 8 by 12s. So we're going to try to make the whole thing out of these two sticks. And I think that shouldn't be an issue and we'll probably still have a little bit left. So the couple of weak points that they did bring up they wanted to try to change on this. They want to be able to make the stand adjustable. They've got guys ranging from 6'3 to a couple ladies there five foot four. So we're going to make this tray so it can move up or down about 5 or 6 inches. So depending on who's using it, it'll be a little bit more comfortable. They also want all the handles different. They say these handles just felt too small. Um, and actually the way they did the joinery, that's kind of the weak point. You can see where the most of the brakes are is right where the joint meets that really small handle. So we're going to completely redesign how that's done. Uh, the other thing we want to do that I made a suggestion is let's make the trays removable because the tray is the part that actually gets damaged the most. There's not enough support on here. So as they're filling these, the mesh will just collapse and tear through. And trying to fix that when you've packed this thing five miles in, not really fun when you're back in there trying to do this with all hand tools. So we're actually going to make it to where the tray is all glued and actually stapled together. And on the bottom of it, I'm going to have four wing nuts. So if this ever does break, they can just remove those wing nuts. The bottom tray will slide off. I'll have another tray pre-built. They can slide it right back on and they're right back to work. And then bring the tray back with them. And hopefully they can have, you know, a dozen or 20 of them set aside. That they can just grab a new tray and then as they all get wore out, we can just rebuild them and keep going. So I'm hoping that that's kind of what's going to work here at the prototype. You know, sometimes what you think you're going to do in your head and what actually ends up playing out are two different things, but we're just going to go with it. I've never built one. I've never even seen one of these until they asked me, so we're just going to wing it. So let's hit the table saw and let's get started. Okay, so I kind of want to focus on this one piece at a time. So I just got taken the bolts off, so we're going to remove the legs and everything out of the way for now. So right now, what we're going to be focusing on here is going to be the actual base of this. So I'm probably going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the tray since I want that to be separate. So we're going to start off on getting the sides and this upper part of it built. So you can see right here, I was talking about the old joinery. Right where this joint meets is right at the kind of where you're putting all the heavy weight of the actual handle. So you can see it broke here at the joint, it's broke here a couple of times, it's broke on the bottom, broke on the side, so they've had to repair that. So we really want to get rid of this weak link first on the handle. So I think what I'm, I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to actually beat the handles up a little bit so that this handle won't quite go in so far, but I'm actually going to double stack it here on the outside so that we can actually get bolts on the inside of this joint and on the outside and kind of mesh them together. I think that's going to make it a little bit more rigid. And then we'll go ahead and we'll work on how we're going to make the tray removable because the legs is the easy part. This is going to be the hardest part of this design. So. Now normally you do this with a dado stack, but I don't really have one at the time. I actually lent it out and I didn't realize I haven't got it back yet. So we're going to go ahead and use a chop saw. So what you're going to want to do here is you always want to kind of give yourself a square. Obviously keep the square move back so it's actually not anywhere in the path of the blade, but it still gives you a nice square surface. 
So we want to kind of work our way into this. We don't want to just gouge and be like, ah, we cut too much. You know, measure twice, cut once. So we're going to make our way to ease into actually cutting that down. So if you look here on the side of your chop saw, at least on mine, I got this Ryobi. If you look right here, there's a, this little adjustment needle and you have this little pin. You can swing that around because what we want, if we slide this board back, we only want the blade to come through, uh, I don't know, we'll call it about 25% of that wood. So if you actually have this and slide this out, you can see the very tip of that blade is going to be about 30% or so roughly that we're going to cut through the side of it. So that's what our goal is. But what you have to make sure is because you've got a round blade, you want to make sure that you're going to go all the way past. You get that square cut all the way through the end of it. So that's why you put your square there. But you want to make sure your square is nowhere close to your blade because the last thing you want to do is chop up your nice aluminum square. So let's go ahead and get this thing in here. We're going to start working up the first cut. Now normally when I'm going to make a handle like this, I'll actually kind of draw something out and I'll either hot glue or I'll two-sided tape these two pieces of board together and do them on my bandsaw. My bandsaw is broken right now, so we're going to use the CNC. So last night I wrote up a quick program to kind of give me a little arch here for what I'm hoping is going to work. So now what I've done is I go ahead and I clamped one of the large sideboards down and then I put a sacrificial board down underneath it uh, just to lift it up and raise it so I can make sure they're going to be the same. I'm also going to use this as my square edge to line each one of them up so they'll be identical and then kind of clamp them and this board down. So let's run this and then we'll come back and we'll hand sand to kind of get the real finished product that we like and hopefully this can knock out all four of these pretty quick. Okay, so we got all these all off the CNC. So now if we just kind of stand these up, you kind of see how these will kind of interlock here into that joint. And then these secondary handles will go in here. So then we have two different spots. So then I can join these here and at the end. And then I'll also glue these together, probably with a couple of screws as well, just so we're gonna make this joint a little bit more sturdy than it was before. And obviously we'll just have the same thing on this side. And then we'll come through with the hand sander and we'll round all these edges. I'll probably bring my router and round off each edge and kind of round these handles just to make them a little bit more comfortable as well. Obviously, they won't stay square. So now we're going to go ahead and get this all glued up. And then while this is drying, we're going to go ahead and work on that removable base. Okay, so this is what our tray layout is going to look like. Now, this is pretty thin lumber. I mean, this is 5 eighths by 1 inch. So it doesn't give us a whole lot of room to work with as far as being super rigid. But I want it to be able to be removable and still try to keep it lightweight. So to kind of make this a little bit more rigid, I cut these two inch by two inch, three quarter inch plywood squares that I'm, I'm gonna end up gluing and finish nailing in each corner. And then I'll run a finish nail this direction in each one to kind of make it a little more rigid on the sides. But as far as the mesh going across it, the other thing I got is I got some 7 16 just round steel. So I'm gonna take this round steel and I made it so it goes about halfway through this board. So I'll put a little divot so that these little round steel We'll kind of go in here, which will also give it something else to kind of help it make it more rigid with the, the actual mesh. And then hopefully the mesh will also, as I attach it, because I'll actually attach the mesh to this with some small wire. Um, hopefully all that will help make it rigid enough that it can be removable. And then the other thing I've got is I've got these right here. So this end will get drilled into the base, and then this other end has a wing nut on it. So I want that to be able to go all the way through, because I figure if I put two bolts on each corner, so if this tray was removable, then in the field, if it were to happen to break or give them any issues, they could just pull these wing nuts off, take it off. If they have a spare tray, they just bolt the new tray back on since it'll be built to the same dimensions and then just get right back at it and then they can come back and replace the trays. Now, if they don't want the trays to be removable, which totally up to them, I'm also going to build one that's a little bit more rigid that just kind of screws right in place to it. And I don't think I can get these any longer. I think this is the longest I can get. So they'll just have to kind of put screws in it. And if one's down, the whole machine is down. So I will leave that up to them. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to take these two sides. We're going to put them together. And then I'm going to take a 7 16 drill bit so that way I know my holes will be lined up on both sides. And I'm going to run that through so then that this will actually sit flush with this piece of wood. So then that way as I attach the mesh all the way around here, which I'll do next, once that mesh is on there, the mesh will sit flush over the top of this. And then I'll come back through with some really small wire and I'll twist the and, and kind of tie together that wire with these to kind of make a little bit more support. And then we'll take the plywood pieces, glue and nail those 
on top of everything to kind of pinch it together. So hopefully it works. We'll give it a go. Let's kind of start putting this thing together and let's go cut some mesh. So now the main part of the tray has only been drying for a couple hours here, so I'm going to keep letting it go, but I want to get this on here so we can get the whole thing drying. So now if we lay the tray that we just made, we lay that down so you can see that the bars will be underneath to give us some more support. we also got those little 2 by 2s in the corner to make it a little bit more rigid. Now I still do want to try to make these actually removable and replaceable, so I'm going to pre-drill and countersink my holes. I figure three screws top and bottom and then four on each side, and we'll evenly space them, especially, especially around these rods to kind of make sure that stays nice and tight. So that way in the field, if they had to, they could actually just unscrew this, remove this, throw another tray on and get right back at it. I'm not gonna be able to do the wing nuts just because I don't think it's gonna be rigid enough to hold the thickness of that, so I really want it just to kind of hold up for them. But we're gonna end up using, as I like using these Dex, Dexmate screws, Deckmate screws, <laughs> whatever you want to call them, and these have more of that star head on them. Phillips heads I find just strip out too much, especially if they're going to be out in the weather. So I really prefer using these uh, so they can go get a couple of tips like that, give it to their employees and be able to swap these out. So we'll go ahead and get this one all pre-drilled. We'll get this installed and then we're going to sit it back outside and let it sit overnight. I don't want to move it around too much until the glue dries. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we're going to round all the edges off all these handles and kind of mold them together. And then we're going to put the legs on it, make those all adjustable and try to finish this thing up. My GoPro died, so you guys didn't get to see me actually put all these cross braces or get the legs installed. But then the other thing is, the company actually sent me this. So those are little sketches that all their employees kind of put together that had things that they wanted added to this, since this is just kind of a prototype. So I took the common theme from both of them, and I'm going to add it to this. So the one thing is making the legs adjustable. So we're going to come back through, pull this thing back apart, and we're going to drill holes so that it's going to have three or four different adjustment points as far as height. The other thing that was common is they wanted more handles. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to put some metal handles underneath here right in the middle so it'll be balanced. And then the one last common thing is everybody was complaining about this moving around while they were hiking so they wanted to lock it in place. So I went ahead and drilled holes on both sides on the side of this frame and then I'm going to add these wing nuts. So then when they get to their job they can just pull the wing nuts off when they get all done. They just slide the bolt through both sides, throw that wing nut on and then they can carry it and then this thing's not going to move the whole time they're in transport. So hopefully that kind of meets what everybody wants. We'll get some metal handles installed here and um, then we're also going to go ahead and drill the guys here to make this adjustable and then we're going to go deliver it and see what they think. Thanks for sticking along this far into the video. Now if you're wondering this whole time like what in the heck is he building? Let me show you this finished product. So what we've got here is this company will come out to any piece of property or come out to a riverbed that they're going through and they're actually going to carry this out. They're going to be looking for fossils or certain types of minerals but they needed to be able to carry this out into the field you know miles back in in some cases to actually go through and sort it. So we've got some half inch grating. Now we have some bracing on it, which I'm hoping is gonna make that a little bit more rigid. We've added a handle so that they can actually carry it back into the woods a little easier than trying to manhandle this whole thing in there. The other problem that a lot of them had was that if this wasn't locked in place as you're hiking, this is trying to move around and kind of smack into your knuckles. So I actually added right here a bolt with a wing nut right on the inside. So they can actually just remove this wing nut here. And then this inner bolt will just push right out. Now they can pull that out. They can just drop this in their pocket wherever they're going. So when they're done, they can put it back in. So now I'm going to show you what this thing opens up, what they would do with it. So now they would, you'd have two different people working with this. You'd have one that would actually be running this piece of equipment. And then the other one actually be having a shovel and kind of dig stuff and actually pour rocks into it. So when they get to where they're going, one person would be able to grab this, pick this right up. So now you can see the tray is inside of this, so now they actually have kind of what's going to look like a big giant shaker tray. So one person will actually be here holding onto the side of this, the other one will be shoveling rocks and dirt in here so they can actually sift it. So then they can just sit here kind of shake it back and forth this way and kind of sift everything out of it so all the larger stuff will fall down below and then everything they're looking for, the little smaller pieces, will stay inside the tray. Kind of like they're, almost like they're mining for gold, but the whole thing had to be portable. So I took the one that they gave me which was broken and then rebuilding this adding this one like it is, kind of freestanding like this where it locks in place with the handle. And this only added an extra little over a pound versus the one that they had before that was just falling apart. So I'm hoping this is gonna be rigid enough that they're gonna be able to use it. Um, and then they're gonna want them because if they, uh, if they really like this prototype, we're gonna end up coming back and building about 20 of these. So this is gonna be the initial one. So this one, I didn't sand it. I didn't put a stain or any kind of finish on it because 
if this is what they want, I'm going to take this all back apart, take all my measurements off of it so then I can just repeat this over and over. Well, thanks for joining me for another video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to give a thumbs up, feel free to share. If you have any questions or comments about this build or any of my other builds, please put them down below. I'll do what I can to answer them for you. If you really enjoyed this, you want to join me for all my other projects, all my other adventures, hit that subscribe button. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you around.